Thank you very much for joining us today. My name is Julie Hall and today I want to show you how I create these beautiful in the hoop um, doilies using machine embroidered cutwork. The cutwork gives you the beautiful um, Richelieu or bar tabs as well as the gorgeous and sexy satin. It's a great simple project. All you need is tear away stabilizer, some wash away stabilizer, and your favorite threads, as well as, of course, 100% cotton fabric. So let's get started. So let's get started. What I've got in the hoop here is my 100% cotton fabric. Now I have starched this really heavily. And when I say really heavily, I mean I have sprayed both front and back three times, ironing and letting it cool in between. What I'm after is just to make the fabric as inflexible as I possibly can. I've got my design loaded on the screen. My cutwork design is four colors. However, normally I would do them all in the same color. To make it easier to see where I'm placing the cutwork, I'm using a contrasting color thread on the first stitch only. So I'm going to stitch the first colorway here. And what the first colorway shows us is where we are going to cut. Now the design that I'm doing here is the cutwork doily. I love this design because it is, to me, simple and elegant. I'm doing it on a coloured fabric because I want to bring a sense of modernity into the design. So the first outline here is showing the outline of the doily itself. And then we will show the internal. Cut as well. So the first of the pens that I want to look at is the cutwork blade. We okay, used to so sell the first these complete. and what I Let's love about this tool to is that it has a really nice grip and on step it. two. Unfortunately, so I, I cannot get stock into Australia hoop anymore, hoop so I don't want to focus too much machine. on this one today, and but what if you have I've one, put do use it. Here. The is second blade that I want to show mat. you is I a regular a Stanley knife style blade. Because it's got a little bit I more of a comfort grip than you find on your standard Stanley, but it's still a long a way between my fingers blade. and the blade. If you don't so have a sharp blade, I just and don't I've got feel like I've got a I great control over it. Have a go at. The last one that I want to show you, and my favourite for this tool, is the little ceramic blade. I got this at Office Works and what you will see is that you can get your hands down quite close. It is a ceramic blade and what I like about it is and actually that's working pretty darn well 
what I like about the ceramic blade is I can get in nice and close. What I want to do is I'm going to cut out both the stabilizer and the fabric from the inner circle. When it gets to the outer circle, obviously I'm not going to cut away with the cutting blade simply because it will just remove the item firmly from the hoop. So when I get to the outside, I will be using my scissors to just cut away the top level. But, and I do have to um, keep on moving my hoop around. The important thing is that your hoop must remain straight. So if I come around... And I'm actually loving this as a solution, actually. It's working very well. As always, poking out your tongue is a great way to gain control over whatever you are doing. Now we want to be probably about a millimeter or two away from that stitching line. As we get closer, let me grab my little squeezy scissors there. You can just trim away those extra bits. So I really don't mind how you go about cutting away. And you can see how easy it was there for me to go off track. Now, I've got a messy desk, so it's trying to get that straight enough. And this is one of the reasons that you really want well starched fabric because you don't want it moving at this stage. Other questions that I often get is um, why am I not using wash away stabilizer in the hoop? The main reason is just because I don't need to. The end of the day I'm pretty stingy. Um, I am happy to use the right products when I need to and we're about to use some once we get through this step but I don't want to waste those products and putting a huge layer of, um, of wash away would absolutely be a waste. Now if you are a scissor person you need to be using very thin, and of course I love my squeezy type scissors, but then you could come along and trim. And remember internally, you want to go through all the layers. Externally, so around the edge, you only want to go through the one layer. The other reason that it is important to have a fantastic um, starching is because you can see here that there are very few little floopies. Now this is a 100% cotton. It's a quilter's cotton and it's one that I dyed years ago. Um, what we don't want to happen is for all those floopies to start um, sticking out from the cut work. 
So once we've done that center piece, we need to come through and trim around the outside edge. Now to do that, and I'm just going to make sure that everything I do is visible here. Nothing like reminders popping up on the screen as you go along. What you need to do is just double up, just almost use your scissors to um, pinch a small piece of fabric, which is going to give you a cut. You'll notice that I'm doing that away from the design simply because if there is a hole in the stabilizer I want it to be far away and then making sure that I am only cutting through the top layer so fabric only I'm going to come through now I could have hooped stabilizer only and just lay the fabric on top there would be nothing against doing that at all always about finding the right spot isn't it what I love about the squeezy scissors is just the sense of control that they give me um, what I find is that with larger scissors I can get to a point where I am feeling like I'm not controlling where those scissors are going and I never feel that with the little squeezy ones. Now, once I've cut this out, I'll show you exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to trim away some of the excess fabric just because I don't want to stitch the fabric back together. So take, you know, between half an inch and an inch away. And we're going to continue doing that right the way around the design okay so we've now trimmed around the entire project but what we need to do is re-stabilize our hoop and the fabric within the hoop together so that the stitching can be done and to do that we are going to use a wash away stabilizer the wash away stabilizer that i'm going to use today is just a sticky back stabilizer and it is a lovely one to use simply because it holds itself in position if you don't have a sticky back wash away just regular wash away will be fine because the next row of stitching and unfortunately as the sticky back ages some of the stickiness disappears but I only need a little bit to get me through so I take the shiny side and I lay it flat and lay my project on it so what I want and look I'll be honest sometimes it's easier even though it's not flat flat to start off just on that side and then lay it flat to secure it 
Okay, so now we are ready to go back to the embroidery machine. So we're now ready to start the second round of stitching. Second round of stitching replicates exactly what the first round does. And the reason that we do that is so that the wash away stabilizer can be stuck to or stitched to the outline of the design successfully. Now I've changed my fabric or my thread to being that um, same colour as what I'm going to do all of my major stitching with. And that's it for colorway too. Oh no, I lie, because we've got to do the insides yet. So one of the things that you will notice when you are doing these bar tacks is that each of the tacks has been made to sit just a couple of millimeters over the fabric. This is what holds those two layers together. If for some reason your bar tacks are not colorway through going three over to where the fabric to do our is, bar tacks it means that there is an here. issue now, either um, with if you the holding to, down you do of the fabric color. or uh, with the, the tension of your machine. Stop after the bar tacks, Never so be afraid to play with your option. machine's tension. It is totally um, reliant on what bobbin fill you are using, on what thread you are using, and it will change. Um, between different projects so this is one of those touching points where you can check if you are on the right track So when you're looking at cut work, the other thing that I want to talk about is thinking outside of the square. Don't look at cut work as just something that you can use on a doily. Think about cut work on, a, on the edge of a pair of capri pants. Um, I've done that and it's looked absolutely stunning. You could also use cut yeah, work on colourway 4. On, colourway 4 um, is going to do all of the satin stitch You can use it on your linen. And it's one of the things that I've been working design on is well. I got a so set of black sheets and I want to use teal thread and do a very modern take on cut work. So it really can be more than just your basic doily. And we've included a lot of those designs in this small mini collection. The other thing I want you to take note of is the actual stitches that I use when we are coming around and making both the bar tacks and the um, satin stitches. It is very specific, the stitching that I do. Not only are there, um, is there an outline stitch, but there is a double row of zigzag stitching, which means that the stitches are all held together. They are not going to fall apart as soon as you put them in water. The last point I want to make is when you are looking at completing your project we need to um, look at how we are going to get rid of that wash away stabilizer 
I have heard of people getting their lingerie bags out and putting their cut work in the wash. You can certainly do that, but I find that a little bit of a harsh way to go. Personally, I get out my favorite baking dish, making sure, of course, that it, is, that it is impeccably clean, and I fill it with tepid warm water. I then soak my cut work in it for about five minutes aside, and what I find is that that gets rid of all of the stabilizer that I need to. It still leaves me with a project that is quite stiff at the end, but that's okay with me. As a general rule, I'm putting this on display um, and I would then lay it flat on a towel to dry before I pressed it lightly with an iron. Um, I love cut work and I think it's a great way of using up some scraps of fabric. The other one that I'm going to try is using cut work with some vinyl and some cork just to give a differing point of view. So think beyond the square, think what you can do with leftovers of a baby's clothing. Think of what you could do with even leftovers of your wedding dress. You could have um, some beautiful keepsakes that were made for you to use. Okay, so what we now have, and I'm just going to move that design forward so that I can show you. What I am loving is check out that beautiful satin stitch around the edge there. I'm really happy with the way that turned out. And now I can go along and create all of these gorgeous designs in different colours for my rainbow doily collection. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you've all learnt something new. And until next time, have a stitching day. Bye.